Thank you very much, John. And God bless you. Hi, Sheila. I see you. You're blessed. Um, there is something happening within me. And because something is happening within me, there will be an outward expression of that. So when I meet you and I grab you, it is not a makeup. It is what's happening within me. I'm really seeing it without. It's, it's, an exciting, it's really an exciting time, exciting time to be here. It's like a reunion where families coming together. But much more so important is that Inside here is a little warm this morning, isn't it true? Though we are living in, in England, in the winter. It's, it's, huh? it's, are we in, in the winter? Not, not as yet, it's, it's in autumn. Autumn, okay, but it's a little cold. But it's a little cold... But in here, this morning, you took out your coat, so, because it's warm, right? What is expected of you and of us? That which is happening within, take it out there. When you go out in the cold, you can transform it into the same temperature. I'm speaking of spiritual things, my friend. This morning, I want to share some principle concerning the kingdom and the releasing of the life of Jesus Christ. And we cannot release anything if it's not within. And the Lord had me to revisit the beatitude. Because sometimes we just read it through. But we need to take a closer look of the beatitude and listening to the prophetic utterance this morning I know that God is calling us and God has commissioned us and God wants us to release over the years that which he has deposited in our lives the beatitude speaks of some declaration it was some a discussion Jesus was having with his disciple just a discussion He was discussing to his sons of the kingdom and declaring the blessed qualities that his sons of the kingdom, the character of the citizens of the kingdom should walk in. He was also telling them the standard for every believer, a way of life. It is the New Testament equivalent of the New Testament, the Ten Commandments. It is the law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ. And so they were having some discussion. And the discussion and the scriptures we're going to read speaks of a twofold principle. One, of receiving the life of the kingdom. And two, of releasing the life of the king of the kingdom. We don't only re 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 receive a life and keep it there. We receive a life because we must release that life. In Africa, in the Caribbean, in Europe. We have to think of us cooperatively as a network and individually as a local assembly in our own our local expression in our church community. The question is, what is the motivation of the kingdom of God? And the motive of the kingdom of God is really love. 
Let's see it after me. See the motive of the kingdom of God is love. And 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 14, I'm reading from the New King James Version. For the love of God compels us. The love of God compels us because we judge, we judge dust. If one die for all, then all died. And Romans 5, 5 says, Now the hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out. Has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who, has, who was given to us. So just as the human heart receives and releases blood, so the heartbeat of the kingdom is to receive and to release the life of Jesus Christ. We, re we received and we, re we released it. Even when John came to Dom Dominica with Don, um, we, were, we were having a discussion. Because I wasn't, we weren't, I wasn't even clear yet what the Lord was saying concerning this conference and what he wanted me to share whenever I was, would be given the, the opportunity to share. But one thing he said to me clearly, the, the reformation of Josiah, Hezekiah, and so on, we see God use people from within. And so it will be in this network now. God going to use because you have the capacity to, because we are plugged in, to be, begin to transfer your life into my life as well as others within the network. So we need to, to be able to look at over the years what we have been, what, 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 what have been um, um, downloaded into our lives and now impart the network with it. And so, what, we are, what, what is happening here today and the, the prophetic utterance, all I could do in my heart is weep. Because I know God is in our mix. God is in our mix. And let us look closely at the pattern of the Beatitude. In Matthew chapter 5 and from verse 3, we'll read from, I'll read from verse 3 to 6 and then... I will look at the, 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 the other side of it. It says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. This is receiving the life and the nature of Christ. This is where it starts. The point spirit, this is the beginning point of our walk. That's where we started. We must see our need for the king. This is the attitude that says, I need you, Lord. I am poor in spirit. I cannot do anything without you. That's where we start. This is the beginning point. We don't end there. Remember, it was some discussions. And after you are poured in, you mourn. It's not the mourning like somebody is dead. It is a mourning that somebody is alive, but want more of God. Because a dead man or a dead woman has just been Resurrected. All who realize that they don't have all the answers and who are tired with the religious feast and programs and traditions. I mean, traditions is part of our lives. We know that. But we, we are tired with that. And we want something fresh. We want something new. We want that real life. We will see that the need for the king. We have experienced that inward sorrows because we were poor in spirit. 
And because of that inward sorrow, it produces repentance. And allow the life of the king to work in our lives. The word of the Lord declares in 2 Corinthians 7, 9 to 10 says, No, I rejoice not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow lead to repentance. Take note, your sorrow lead to repentance. Your sorrow leads to change. When Jesus started his public ministry, first thing he said, repent. Change your mind. Change your attitude. Change your ways. Change the way you think. So that repentance lead to change. For we were made sorry in a godly manner that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. For godly sorrows produces repentance leading to salvation. Not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. That sorrow doesn't produce death. It produces life. We mourn when we see the beauty of the king. We long to be like him. And we know that we will be like him. And that causes repentance. And because we repent, there comes comfort. So he began to comfort us. As sons and daughters of the kingdom. So he was saying to his disciples, hey, you mourn, you point spirit, you mourn, and then you will be comforted. Blessed are the meek. Meekness is not weakness. I'm very humbled to even stand before you this morning. But that, that doesn't mean I'm weak. And I don't depend also on the stature of, do not, I don't depend on the stature of my strength, my own strength, my size. I depend on his strength at all times. In the Hebrew language, meekness means worn out. I have been worn out, Lord. I've tried everything. I've come to a place now to realize I can do nothing. But I can do all things for Christ who strengtheneth me. In my own strength, I'm worn out. I, I, do not, I, do, I do not have any energy in my own strength, my own personal strength to do anything. But I totally depend upon the king of the kingdom. So the fight is gone on, gone out of us. And we are meek because we are waiting and willing for the king now to rule us. Because we shall reign on the earth. Now, when we receive that life, God expects us to release it. So when we receive the nature of the king, the discussion, they had a discussion. He said, this is what has to happen for you to receive my nature. But you don't only receive my nature, receive this life to just keep to yourself. Whatever you do, you must affect other persons. Whoever you get in contact with, you should affect them. People are not looking anymore for us to tell them we are Christian. They want to see that we are followers of Jesus Christ. Our lifestyle, our speech should be trust. Peter could not hide it, you know, because his speech betrayed him. So wherever we go, wherever, whatever we, we get in contact with, and whoever we get in contact with, we should download the principle of the kingdom. It is not a religious principle. It is a lifestyle. The truth of the matter, sometimes religion want me to make, make, makes me puke. Want me, want me to puke. I want to see the life of Jesus. That's what the world is looking for. Because remember, what governs the kingdom is love. And it compels us to operate like the king. You're not just in the kingdom and just here by accident. No, sir, you have been planned and purposed by God. But it's what you do with it. I said the Dominican brethren are going to change the weather when we come up. But it's what you do with it. 
We brought up the sun with us. You cannot deny that fact. What are you going to do with it? That's what we had. We release it. Whatever you receive, you should be able to release it. Matthew 5 from 7 to 9 says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall what? Obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Discussions that we should not take lightly. This is the principle, this is the life of the kingdom. The resulting factor of the kingdom, there's always a clash between two kingdoms. And from 10 to 12, it says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when man revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. It's a lifestyle. These two kingdoms will always clash. The kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. One of the songwriters wrote, when we look around the world, it, 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 look like, it, it seems like evil have won, but no, evil have not won. Because I am one of the instruments that have been snatched out of the, of the kingdom of darkness and in the kingdom of light. And now the principle of God in my life is to go into the kingdom of darkness to get building material for the kingdom of light. Evil have not won. But we are the seeds of the kingdom and as we go wherever we are, to our various countries after the conference, we don't end there. That seed is supposed to germinate and produce more. Trees and seed. When the apostles did they preach the word of God and the brethren became followers of Jesus Christ in Acts chapter 14, the latter part of the verse says, We must through much many, many tribulation enter the kingdom of God. We must, and if through the scriptures you're seeing to operate in the lifestyle of the kingdom, there will be always a conflict, always trouble. It means it is important and very important. Our lifestyle will affect the kingdom of darkness. But the kingdom of darkness will fight back. They will not overcome us once we operate in the rules of the kingdom because the king will protect us. Anytime you begin to operate in this inward working in our lives, and when, you start to, when we start to express it, it means that you are in relation with the king. So you could only express that relationship of the king, what you receive from the king. And God wants us to release his life in our community, on the job place, in the workplace, in our local churches, wherever we are, in his life, because we are in a relationship with him. And it means when we begin to do that, our relationship with the king is really proper. Now, when we look around us, we see the Sea of Galilee receive a flow from the river and releases a flow. But also, there is also a Dead Sea that receives and never releases, it's dead. We cannot operate like that, like the Dead Sea. We have to operate like the Sea of Galilee. Our life, what we receive, 
and was released. I'm not saying most of us are not doing it, but we need to do it more effectively now. There's always room for improvement. Always room for improvement. When we go back, we must release what is being said because God has given us the kingdom. Not to keep for ourselves, but to release it. Beloved, the kingdom is a present reality. It is for us today now. It's not for the future. It's now. Some people put it off in the future. It's a present reality. It's for us now. The kingdom takes priority over everything. It comes first. It comes first in our lives. I've heard so many talk about the kingdom, and when you look at that person's lifestyle, it's not. It's always God, my family, the church. Because it's from the family you will see how we're going to affect the church and how we're going to affect the lifestyle. That's how God works. The kingdom takes priority in everything that we do. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and then things will be added unto us. As over these days, we, we meet and we hear what God is saying to us, and one of the things the Lord said to me, release what I have given to you. I'm here ready to serve John, to please John, to do anything, but I cannot give what is not within here. And just release it. I'm a son of a kingdom. I believe strongly in the kingdom principles and the values of the kingdom. There are those here with me, they could tell you. Who is the Is they really making it up? John, I've known John from since 85, John. I met Hilton there too. Very tiny, very slim. You have the, the, the photo? Let me show it to him. If you see Harry, you see Hilton, you see Hubert. You. you remember the castaways? Damn it. And I always remember in that conference, John, I don't know, after we, you all really releases the word, you were releasing what was within you. I always remember a question, and within that, it stayed silence. How can I go back to my people and say we have been teaching them wrong all the time? Do you remember that question? Remember that question as well? We never, some never accepted what these people have been taught. And that is why I can look back and see the work that John has done over the years in the Caribbean, in Africa. I couldn't talk about what happened in Dominica. And I was sharing with them last night um, when he came in, Ken Tyson, yes, and I wish that Glenda was here with him and we have to pray for her deliverance. She kind of, right now she says she just don't want to travel on the airplane. The plane, well, she's afraid of airplane. Otherwise she would have been here too. These are two dear people to me. And um, um, the places he stays by, Vina guess, or remember Vina's? The labor he poured out now the fruit, the things that he have done, the things that he have done, the labor, the, 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 what he have done in my life, what he have done in the life of our fellowship, is bearing fruit. Are you there? He poured out something, and he's produced something. It cannot stop there. It must continue. It must, must continue. And those of you that are here and seeing him traveling, he's affecting lives. Are you there? The kingdom of God is marked by violence. It's not the violence where you take a gun and kill somebody, you know, or take a knife. And I, I, I want to appeal to us, and I'm discussing that with John, but in Dominica presently, for in two weeks' time, we have had six murders. 
Seven now. My God, seven. This is un unheard of in Dominica. One in a year, the entire island is mourning and weeping. Seven in two weeks. We need to do something about that. And I'm asking that you stand with us. Remember us in your prayer. Because one way or another, whether you are from the kingdom or not, your life can be affected. Your family. One of the, 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 the murder victim, um, his wife, is Agatha's my wife, cousins. So you can never tell. We are not dealing with this kind of violent. Okay? The scriptures is clear the kingdom of God suffer of violence. And I prefer the one in Luke where it says the law of the prophets were until John. Since that time the kingdom of God has been preached and everyone is pressing in. Is oppressing in. And as we press into the kingdom it's a violence walk. Although the grace of God Offers the kingdom to us. We must. With violent faith. And, confi and confession. Takes it. We must seize. Our mountain. Seize our situation. It, we see. Even in the, in the time of. Jehoshaphat. When the children of Israel. Were, were confronted with, 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 with the armies. And God says. You did not have to fight. I will fight for you. And sometimes we often heard that they did not have to do anything, but that's not true. They had to position themselves. They had to position themselves. It is a time for us to position ourselves. And Joshua was one of the spies who went in and spied the, the land of Canaan. He's also the one who was powerful testimony when he spoke to Joshua. I mean Caleb spoke to Joshua. In Joshua 14 and verse 12, the latter part of it says, I sh shall be able to drive out the enemy as the Lord have said. I shall be able to drive them out because the Lord said that and that settles it. What is the Lord saying to us as a network? What is the Lord saying to us as a church? What is the Lord saying to us individually? We cannot sit there and expect things to just work. God, we are, in, we are engaged in a conflict. We are engaged in warfare. And so we have to seize the kingdom. We have to seize our mountain, sorry. Mountain speaks of any situation in our lives. Whenever we engage in warfare, the enemy will do everything to sidetrack us. The kingdom demands perseverance. We must persevere. Jesus himself said, he that put up his hands to the plow and look back is not fit for the kingdom. Beloved, we have gone too far to look back. We need to press on. We need to press on. No surrender. And you British know it well. Winston Churchill, Winston Churchill will fight in the mountain, fight in the sea, fight until... Fight in the land, we'll fight until every man fall to the ground. No retreat. Every man will all fall, fall to the ground in this army. We will persevere. And we will conquer. Perseverance is the key. It's a long walk, but he's walking along with us. He's walking along with us. The kingdom we are, we are presenting to you is marked by power. No, I want to explain that. Say power. Power. 
spirit, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but power. Power here speaks of the Lord mighty ability and the, the, the mighty ability and strength of the Lord. Not by might, not by, but by your spirit. That's why I said earlier on, I have to depend totally on the Lord. Because if you're talking about strength, remember David could not have killed Goliath. Or even faced him. But David faced Goliath in the name of the Lord. The ability within you, the ability, because what you have within you to be released is powerful. And that is why the enemy wants to choke it. When you do not know who you are and what you have, the enemy wants to choke it and you cannot move forward. But when you know who you are and what you have, your resources as available to you, you can do exploit for God. So the kingdom is marked by power. You are powerful. Last week I thought, I was teaching in church the, the, about the supernatural ministry and I was saying no one have really moved into the full possibilities of the supernatural ministry. But once you minister the word of the Lord, that is supernatural. To see somebody transformed from a sinner to a sin, somebody transformed from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, that is supernatural. So if that is supernatural, it means we have a supernatural message being ministered by a supernatural people who is flowing from the kingdom. We also are supernatural. That's not everything. That's truth. So if the enemy begins to make you look at yourself to be otherwise, what is happening? God is revealing his truth to his sons and his daughter and his daughters, and they can come and say, Thou save the Lord, and we know it ministered to our heart. That is supernatural. That's powerful. What you are doing in the kingdom is supernatural because you are a supernatural being. My last point, if all what I've said, I didn't say this, it means I didn't say nothing at all. The kingdom is to be taken to the whole earth. Let's say it. The kingdom is to be taken to the whole earth. It's not only England, it's not only Africa, it's not only Dominica, not only St. Martin, but to the whole earth. And we see it in the, in the gospel. Go into all the world. Make disciples. Teaching them to observe all things. And lo, I am with you. Always. In Matthew 24 and verse 14 said... And this gospel, take note, word is very important in the scriptures. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached. Not any gospel, but this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. The truth of the matter, I'm not being critical. The earth have heard, I've heard a, a gospel, but not the gospel of the kingdom. I want to say it again. The earth have heard a gospel. In other words, you can put it in that way. It's a watered down gospel. And but not the gospel of the kingdom. God is depending on us to take that lifestyle, that gospel to the end of the earth. Wherever you are, wherever you go, he expects you to take that lifestyle there. It's not something when we come here, we leave it here. You know, something when we gather in Roseau, when we gather in, in, in St. Martin, when we gather in St. Martin, you know, and, and we, we meet and we, we raise our hand, we sing ha, 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 hallelujah, and we leave it there. It is something we take wherever we go. And we must release that life that we have received. Matter of fact, there is a scripture in Colossians, I think it's 126, it says that, that, that Christ is in you, the hope of glory. And if Christ is in us, we, we must release that. But what is going to release that? We sing songs of Solomon is a blow. That's why she said, that, that, that's why she said, blow upon me, you not win. And let me, let the, the, the fragrance of the king, of, of, let, let the fragrance within me release. Within each and every son 
of the kingdom and daughters of the kingdom, there is a fragrance to be re released. There is something God wants to release from within us. And through these days, let us ponder, why are we here? What are we going to take back to affect lives? We're not only here to feel good and to get goosebumps. We are here so that a transformation takes place. It's a continuous work. But if we just see if one that transformation takes place, we sit with it. Really, we would have failed God. And I know that you would have failed John. We want our life to be a testimony out there. We want to be able to release the principle of the king, the life of the king that is in our lives. What we have received, we must release it. And if you go and you look at this principle and revisit the beatitude, is it something I, when, when I became a Christian, what, what they were doing, just read it. Somebody else come and say, blessed is that, I'm blessed. But don't understand the, in the depths of that discussion. They were having a discussion like what we have in this morning, a discussion. So Jesus was telling, that is what we cry of you. That's what we cry of you. Remember, it's a decoration to the citizens of the kingdom of how to live by the power of the indwelling Christ. If you miss that, you will depend on your own strength. It's not your strength. It is through him and for him and by him. As we continue and as we labor, as we sit and as we reflect and as we receive this few days what is going to happen let's depend and let, let us take what God is doing our, in our lives back to our communities back to our families back to our local churches father I just give thanks and I give praise unto you because we are a people called by your name father in this time in this season we are in the kingdom for such a time as this Lord we are seeing everything around us falling but we know that your kingdom shall never fall. Father, you said that, that you'll raise up a kingdom that shall have no end. And Lord God, we give thanks and we give praise unto you. Because you who have begun that good work, you are well able. Lord, as we commit ourselves to you this, for this days and this week, teach us. Teach us how to flow and operate as sons and daughters of your kingdom. Let us be aware and let us, oh God, ponder upon the life of the king that we can also release it. Let us be aware of the product that we carry around God. Teach us your ways. But let this week be another week of transformation. Another week, my God. That's not a time where we just come. Father, yes, we're excited about each other. We're excited because it's like a family reunion. But much more so, God. Let the connection that is made from each and every one, because every, each and every one, Father, fa 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 is in that building process to build our lives. And let, let us listen attentively and don't take these things lightly. But let, 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 our, let it shape our lives. You know, she's not through the mouth of your, your servant this week. We thank you in your name. Amen. Thank you, John. And thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Leroy. The kingdom of God. You know, that's, a, that's an awesome responsibility. That, that's, a, that's a fearsome task to be involved in, in God's chosen work for his world, advancing the kingdom. And, you know, you, you, you can think, man, I, I wonder how you get that qualification or how you learn to do that. Or Yes, sir. It's also say, blessed that they do hunger and first after righteousness. After righteousness. You cannot grow without an appetite. An appetite. And to be hungry and hunger and first 
It's a powerful appetite. I'll just leave you with that, John. That's all I wanted to say. All right. Yeah, and of course, God works in us to create that. So, so how does that, how do we do that? How, how do we enter into that? You know, we hear Leroy, we hear what he's bringing. We think, yeah, it's all in the Bible, and we disagree with that. I want us to understand that the kingdom of God is advanced by us choosing to do what he says. It's no more complicated, it's no more difficult than that, us submitting. What may follow can be good. That, that's not every, when I walked into a room in the city of Shrewsbury, when I'd been invited to, to help a Baptist church there that was needing some input, I did not know when they, they should come and meet Richard Cole. I did not know what was going to come out. The only thing I had to do was walk into that room. <laughs> not a big deal. Somebody invited me and I said yes. All that followed out of that, you know, God can work that out. He just wanted somebody to say yes. I walked into the room he was sitting just about where, just about as far as Pax is now. As I walked into the room, God joined our hearts. Didn't know him, didn't know his doctrine, didn't know how difficult he can be. <laughs> didn't know how much fun we were going to have. Didn't know that we were going to invest and lose everything at least three times as we were overrun by rebels. Didn't know all the things that were going to happen. Didn't know what was going to happen to the leaders. Didn't know that Richard one day was going to die before we were ready for him to die. Didn't know that he was going to raise up seed, sown, coming forth in his purpose. Didn't know <coughs> when a friend said, they're asking for some help in this island called Dominica. I don't know if I'd ever heard of it. I can't go. Could, could you help? Didn't know when we got into some of those crazy situations. What God, see, all I'm saying, let's, let's grasp this about the kingdom of God. This is not about religion. This is not about Christianity. This is about the rule of God in the earth. And we've already heard <coughs> through the prophetic this morning that the glory of the Lord <coughs> excuse me, is in the people of the Lord. And it comes as we say yes. Uh, and I want us to understand saying yes is not necessarily saying, yes, I will, you know, lay down my life and be a missionary. In... It's just saying yes, I will do this. I respond to that. We all know that experience. Not what I want, but what you want. Don't miss the opportunity.